Thanks, everybody. Welcome back. We've got two more presentations. Before that, uh, just another reminder about the feedback forms, please, if you wouldn't mind filling those in and just leaving them on the table or giving them to somebody from KHL, that would be great, please. So, first of the two this afternoon is from Phoenix, Arizona, Kelly Hadland, president of Compass Equipment. Kelly's another very experienced tower crane professional, 22 years in the industry. He founded Compass in 2007. His topic today is the use of self-erecting tower cranes. Please welcome to the stage, Kelly Hadland. Do you have the clicker? Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Awesome. Well, thanks for attending this afternoon. I know it's been a lot of speakers have come up here and given a lot of great information. So I hope to educate you on something you may not be completely familiar with. Uh, as he said, my name is Kelly Hadlin, and I'm here to talk to you about the benefits of using self-erecting tower cranes. So self-erecting tower cranes are a particular passion of mine. There's a lot of unique abilities and a lot of great things about them. But I want to first describe to you what a self-erecting tower crane is. That way we're clear on the differences between tower cranes and self-erecting tower cranes. So when they're erected, they look a lot like a normal tower crane. There's a vertical mass that goes up and down. There's a horizontal jib. There's a trolley that goes in and out to change the radius. The crane swings left and right. Um, but that's where, the, that's where the similarities stop. After that, the biggest differences are that self-erecting tower cranes by the way, my timer hasn't started yet, so if you could please get that going, thank you. Self-erecting tower cranes swing from the bottom, so they're bottom slewing tower cranes. That's a big difference. Self-erecting tower cranes set up on outriggers, much like is shown there in that picture. So instead of using a concrete foundation, they set up on outriggers much like a mobile crane does. And you can adjust the heights of those to get the crane perfectly level. Another big difference, of course, is that there's no counter jib. So these cranes, the jibs held up by the suspension going up the rear of the tower, and instead of a large counter jib sticking out the back. That has some advantages to avoid obstructions and things like that. So some other unique features about it, one of the, one of the most amazing things about it is that it folds up into the shape of basically a semi-truck. So it makes it very easy to transport going down the road. So it goes from being a a, a small tower crane folded up into the shape of a semi-truck going down the road. So it can be transported very easily behind just one semi-truck uh, for the crane itself. Of course, the weights ship separately. Um, and we talked about earlier remote controls. These cranes typically, I think, almost always use remote controls, usually wireless remote controls. Sometimes you'll use a wired remote control based on the crane model. There's really no, well, some of the models do have cabs, but the models that do have cabs, you only just sit in there and put the remote control in your lap. So they're totally a remote control operated machine. And of course, they're very sophisticated from an engineering and design perspective. So all of the engineering that goes into folding them up, there's a kind of a cool picture there on the right of one in the middle of unfolding itself. So there's a lot of things that are happening all at one time as all these linkages unfold and, and move about to make it look like a normal tower crane. So I'm gonna talk more about some benefits of the different sizes, small ones, medium ones, large ones, but just some big uh, benefits that, that, that touch all of them. So one is that once it's erected, it takes up a very small footprint. Now, of course, regular tower cranes take up small footprints, but mobile cranes, reach forklifts, those take up a lot of space on a job site where a self-erecting tower crane takes up a very, very small area. Typical outrigger span is about four and a half meters from center to center, and or which is about 15 feet. And once you include like the swing radius and everything in it, these cranes easily fit inside a 25 foot square area. And from that small 25 foot square area, these cranes can cover a large radius around the job. Of course, much like normal tower cranes do, but when talking about mobile cranes or reach forklifts, it's amazing the amount of area that these can cover from one small position. 
Also, there's no uh, expensive concrete foundation required. So these set up on outriggers, like I said before, and depending on your soil conditions and the matting that you provide, uh, typically some minimal ground preparation is needed based on your area and the laws there. They're very cost effective compared to other options, and they're much, much safer than other options. We'll touch, talk a lot about the safety of them as, as time goes on. I want to touch brief, briefly on the history of self-erecting tower cranes. So the best I could tell, it looks like Poton started doing some preliminary designs in the early 1930s. I don't think that product ever really made it to production. They did much with it outside of just using it in-house. In but the first real self-erecting tower crane was uh, created by Lieber in 1949. It was called the TK-10. And this crane had a 16-meter radius, and it could pick 600 kilograms at the tip, so it was pretty small. Uh, Christian, our keynote speaker, I think you might have been on the design team for this crane, weren't you? <laughs> Uh, pretty cool to see the history of these as they, as they come together. In the 70s and 80s, these machines were pretty non-existent in the United States, but they were growing in popularity throughout the rest of the world. They were pretty complicated in how they got erected, uh, and it took someone with a lot of skill to really be able to put them up and take them down, but they were really growing in popularity in the rest of the world. Uh, today, modern machines uh, are much different than, of course, what's shown here in this picture. The manufacturers of today have made the erections very, very simple, and a lot of safety features that go in to making sure you do it right. They're easy to operate, remote control, all the LMIs and stuff are inherently part of it. Uh, the best I can tell, the population in the United States for these is between 500 and 600. Um, which is a really small number compared to Germany alone. There's around 15,000 of these. And that was one of the things that really drove my passion about this product. Um, traveling throughout France many years ago, I saw these everywhere. Uh, the population in France is very, very high as well. And there you'd see these cranes used more often than boom trucks or reach forklifts. They were just absolutely everywhere. And it really planted a seed about how can we introduce this product more in the United States and make them more of everyday part of our construction uh, procedures. So I'm going to talk about the benefits of, of small self-erecting tower cranes, medium ones, large ones, and extra large ones. So let's start with small ones. So small ones um, are typically up to about a 26 meter radius, 85 foot radius, and, and below. And the models that, that we like the most on this size, they're, the counterweights are self-contained, and the axles stay on the machine. So which means that it's very, very fast to erect. These cranes can get erected in sometimes as fast as 30 minutes. So that's a pretty cool feature when you want to move it on site or when you want to set up for a short-term job. Typical applications for this smaller size of crane are custom homes. So custom homes often have a pretty big footprint with rough terrain all over around it. And so sitting in one spot, being able to reach and set all the trusses and everything on that, on that custom home is very, very popular. Actually, we also use them quite a bit in track homes, which is kind of an odd application, but it'll sit in one spot, and maybe be able to cover two or even four homes. Plus, they can move quite easily. Also, they're very, very popular on two to three story apartment buildings where maybe there's 10 or 15 or 20 buildings on a particular site. So since they're so mobile, they can fold up and quickly move to the next location. And you don't need a semi-truck to move them on site. You can move them with a, with a forklift or a large truck. So uh, also, they're really easy to train, and they're really easy to erect and dismantle. So they're a great unit to sell to end users because they're pretty simple to use. They're definitely a lot cheaper and a lot safer than a boom truck. So picture this job site here with a boom truck on it. That boom truck's sitting quite a bit further away. It's a much more difficult operation. But cost-wise, you know, if you were to put this crane out on, say, a two-month-long job, a small boom truck or truck crane is probably going to run you fifty to $60,000 for that entire time. We're putting one of these cranes out on site with an operator is twenty dollars to $25,000. And by the way, that operator is the majority of that cost. I think, like, like my note says, there's 75% of that's the cost of the operator. So he's probably doing efficient stuff. So the cost of the machine is significantly cheaper. 
All right, now I want to talk about probably my favorite size of self-erecting tower cranes, and that's the medium size of self-erecting tower cranes. So on these cranes, the counterweights and the axles are not permanently mounted to the crane. They come off for transportation, and they come off to move on site. But they still can erect pretty fast. They'll erect in just a couple of hours with about three guys, a couple semi-trucks full of counterweights and the crane and stuff. These cranes, to me, for this size range, go up to about a 130-foot radius, a 40-meter radius. And they're very ideal for three to six-story, either light-gauge steel or wood frame homes or uh, apartment buildings. And you can move them on site in three to four hours. So I want to share with you, you know, a passion of mine. So these self-erecting tower cranes, these medium-sized ones, they're actually a really easy sell to the end user when you're dealing with a complicated job site. And maybe there's mountains around or hills around, you can only get to one side. Then the crane can sit right there in the middle and it can cover the entire area. Uh, this one shows it out on the end, which isn't very typical, but it was easier for the demonstration for today. But I want to talk about using this on a wide open job where on this one you can see you can get all the way around the building. So compare using this, a conventional method of a, say a four or five story building. Conventionally, customers might use two to three large reach forklifts running around the job site. They'll have a lot of labor to move the material on site once the forklift places it up on the floors and up on the roof. And you're going to have a mobile crane come in from time to time to do certain lifts. Versus using a medium-sized self-erecting tower crane, you can sit in one location. You're only going to use one small forklift to just deliver material to the crane. And you won't need a mobile crane to come on site. You can finish the job with less labor and complete it a lot faster. And by the way, much, much safer. Because now the product's being set right where it needs to go and being used right there. And you don't have to have people picking up big, heavy pieces of material and carrying them across the job site and maybe tripping over stuff. So uh, from an insurance perspective, much, much safer. So here's a cool side view of the difference, right? A reach forklift is going to precariously reach up to the top of the building and set a bundle of plywood or a bundle of steel up there. It can lift four or 5,000 pounds probably. It can get up there. Now the guys have to re come up there close to the edge of the site, and they have to physically move the material to where it's going. Obviously, a self-erecting tower crane is a much more safer and efficient way of placing materials all over the job site. Being able to, on this example, reach in 117 feet uh, allows you to do a lot of great things with it. So consider the cost savings. So a traditional method of using three, two or three large forklifts, um, a mobile crane that comes and goes off the job site, uh, operators to run those forklifts, and a typical three-month job, they'll probably have 20 laborers on site moving material around, and so that might cost them $350,000 for all those items. But now do the same project with a medium-sized self-erecting tower crane, okay? You'll supply one small forklift to deliver material to the crane. Now instead of applying, you know, having as many operators, you can have a little bit less. And it's easy to convince the customer that because you can place material right where it needs to go, you can get away with just two people less on your job site. Out of 20, now I have 18 guys up there. Just two guys. It's simple to convince. And in real life, it's probably quite a bit more. And also, it's easy to convince them that you can finish that job just two days faster by having this much safety and efficiency in moving your material. And because of that, you would save $50,000. So this is a pretty exciting thing for me, kind of it's a lot of passion for me to, to kind of change the way that the construction industry looks at three to five story buildings, even ones that have full access all the way around it. I think there's some powerful tools to show customers a cheaper and safer and better way of doing it. Now I want to talk about larger self-erecting tower cranes. So again, these, these uh, don't have the counterweights nor the axles permanently attached like the small ones. Uh, to me, a large self-erecting tower crane will go up to a radius of about 45 meters, height under hook of about uh, 30, 32 meters, 112 feet or so. Um, and they can erect pretty fast, you know, four to five hours on site and can be done with a few semi-trucks and they can move on site fairly easily. So compare 
using a 45 meter self erector to a large mobile crane. Actually, not even that large. This example right here is a 120 ton, I believe. And so if you're reaching up and in on a seven story building, it's quite difficult to make that lift with a mobile crane. Uh, where a self-erecting tower crane and even, of course, a small tower crane can sit in one location and reach in a lot further and can make the, safe, uh, excuse me, make the lift a lot more safely and a lot more efficiently. So let's look at a, a comparison of that. So here's a 74-foot tall building that actually the top doesn't even go all the way over on it. And here's a 115 all-terrain crane with a 170 foot of boom, 56 foot jib with a 40 degree offset, sitting out away from the building probably about 55, 60 feet, I believe that is, that dimensions, oh, 57, you can see it. So it takes up quite a bit of space. And it's only reaching in 117 feet, where a small or a medium, sorry, a large self-erecting tower crane can reach in 130 feet. Now imagine that the building comes all the way out. Now the crane's going to have to boom up even higher and reach in, in even less. Here's a plan view of the space differences that it takes up. Obviously, a mobile crane takes up just a ton more room than a large self-erecting tower crane and covers a lot more of the job site than the mobile crane does. So let's talk about the differences of a large self-erecting tower crane versus a small tower crane. Now, the lines get very blurred here, right? We have both in our company. We have small tower cranes. We have self-erecting tower cranes. And some jobs need the reach. Some jobs don't. The lines get very blurry on you know, where that should be exactly drawn. It depends on the job site. depends on the customer. depends on the products. But certainly, some of the differences are that, that you don't need a foundation. Now, small city cranes on a cross base, they can set up without a large foundation, uh, but a lot of them still do have a foundation. And even the ones that have a cross base typically are going to need quite a bit more ground preparation, even probably four pads poured to handle the extreme corner loadings. The self-erecting tower crane sets up in just a couple of hours without an assist crane. Trucking costs are less. Assist crane uh, costs are gone, obviously, and they're a lot easier to operate. So here's a cost comparison of doing a Fullman job. Now, a 120-ton crane full-time on a job like this probably never in reality would happen. That crane would be coming and going over time. But for comparison's sake, consider a 120-ton mobile crane sitting on site for a four-month job. You're probably looking at a cost of $200,000 to $250,000 for that crane to be there that entire time. If you put a small city tower crane on there, uh, without a big expensive foundation, but maybe it's four concrete pads, the assist crane, the trucking, the erection crew, all the costs that go in with that, you're probably looking at about $150,000 cost. Where with a large self-erecting tower crane, the cost is much less at only $100,000 to $115,000. So huge cost savings for this product. Touch briefly on extra large self-erecting tower cranes. This isn't a product that we have in our fleet, but it's really growing in popularity. And it's really popular over out here on the East Coast. Uh, they're still very fast to erect compared to a tower crane. You probably would use a small assist crane to erect these to set the counterweights on them, depending on the job site. But it still sets up with you know three to five guys in, in a short day. And typically, those will reach out to about a 50 meter, 160 foot radius. All right, so some more benefits for this product. So I've touched on a handful of these. But for sure, you can show easily that there is a reduced schedule, especially when you're comparing against uh, on a medium self-erecting tower crane against like a reach forklift and a mobile crane. It's easy to show that the job's a lot more efficient and can get done quite a bit faster. So because of that, the schedule's shorter. The efficiencies are quite a bit better. And everything on the job site can move a lot faster. It eliminates double handling of materials because these cranes can set the material right where it's needed um, instead of setting it up on the edge and having people carry it over and erect it. Um, and this isn't big out here, but for us out on the west, dust controls are a really big deal. Um, 
self-erecting self tower cranes cause no dust. <laughs> they just sit there, right? And so reach forklifts driving around the job site are constantly kicking up dirt. They're running over, hopefully not people, but they're running over nails or running over boards. They're kicking up dust and causing a lot of drama on the job site. So that's a big selling point for us. Takes up a lot, uh, very little amount of space, like I discussed earlier, compared to a mobile crane or, or reach forklifts running around. Um, and the cost efficiency we discuss quite a bit. I think it's easy to show how awesome these are from a cost perspective. And they're easy to learn how to operate. They're not really easy to learn how to erect, but they're really easy to learn how to operate. Once they're up and, and working, it's very simple for the operators to use them. Also, it's a very, very green product. A lot of these run off electricity now. A lot of times they'll supply generators, but there's a lot of times the job site has power, and so you can plug right into 480 volts or 240 volts, depending on the crane, and it's a much greener uh, solution for the environment. Safety features, of course, they have all the built-in safety features that most cranes do. Uh, but one of the things that I love is that there's not a lot of choices for the operators to make. Right on a mobile crane, you got to pick, you got to tell the computer how much counterweight you have, full outriggers, half outriggers, two-part line, four-part line, fixed jib, full jib, all this different stuff. You don't have to do any of that with self-erecting tower cranes. It's all set up and ready to go. And there's no override button. On those remote controls, there's no button to push to take the load out just a little bit further or do just a little bit more. You cannot do it. Only a technician that can get in to the panel that would know how to do that. A couple of quick disadvantages. So they're definitely more difficult to move on site than a mobile crane, right? Uh, they don't have a chassis, and so mobile cranes can fold up and move around site pretty easily, where self-erecting tower cranes take several hours to do that. They're more expensive to purchase than a small tower crane of an equivalent size due to the complexity of all the linkages and hydraulics and cables and pulleys that are going on. Compared to tower cranes, they have limited capacities and reach. They can't go up 600 feet tall. They can't reach out, you know, 80 meters. So they're pretty limited in their size. And they're pretty sophisticated. The way they all fold up and go from being 150 feet tall or 150 feet long to the size of a semi-truck, uh, there's a lot to it. So there's, there's definitely a lot of complications there. I'm um, almost out of time. One of the things that uh, my partner and I love about our company is just the people that are in it. And, uh, you know, this is what makes, makes the product the best that it can be. These guys are out there pushing hard to make the product really good. And, you know, this is what really backs us up. So I'm almost out of time. I won't talk too much about that. Just as a quick conclusion, it's a fantastic product that in the right application is, is really unbeatable. I mean, there's solutions, there's job sites out there where this is the absolute perfect application. And there's a lot of jobs where it'll really outperform all the traditional means of, of lifting. They're really growing in popularity around the United States. So, you know, I think that population percentage will increase quite a bit. Um, and there's significant savings to the customer and good ROI for crane companies. So that concludes my presentation for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Who's got a question about self-erecting tower cranes, please? Anybody? Yes. Nobody? Easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I thought about was operator certification or qualification requirements. What are, what are they for self-erecting tower cranes? Well, there's no law that says they have to be CCO certified, but we push that as much as possible. And from a qualification standpoint, we're certainly pretty involved with that with the operators and make sure that they're safely trained to use the equipment in the right way. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, one question. Oh, we have a question. Uh, it depends on the location completely. It completely depends on the location. There's no easy answer. But I think in, in general that they, the inspectors treat it more like a tower crane than they do a mobile crane. 
but it certainly bridges both sides. So there's, um, there's just no easy answer to that. In California, it's difficult. In most other states, it's pretty easy and there's no permits required. Thank you. Another question? We wait for the microphone. Is that Uh, what about permission to drive in roads with these cranes? So you saw earlier that there was a, a picture with a semi-truck and the crane was all folded up and it was on a set of wheels. So the permission to drive on roads just completely depends on the axle loadings and the spacing based on your state laws. So again, just like the permits, that varies from state to state. Uh, typically for the models we use, the, we do need a permit to drive them around, but an annual permit suffices. Out here on the east, I, I don't know, we'd have to talk to some of the guys that have them out here, it's probably more difficult. But you really just have to apply to the trucking laws that all the trucks have to uh, adhere to. Thank you, okay. Kelly. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yep. Thank you.